your hand. Get your hands together. Put your hands, put your hands together. Close your eyes. Quiet your hearts. Quiet your minds. Take a deep breath. Think about God. Dear Lord God, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for God's true word, the Bible. We just thank you for each person here. We thank you for Rebecca and James and Daniel and David and Miss Brandy and Mr. Connor and Miss Jill. We thank you for um, all that you've done for us. We pray, Lord, that you forgive us of the things that we do wrong that's called sin and help us to do better next time. We pray, Lord, for these requests that we have. Connor and David would like to pray that the coronavirus would end. And Daniel would like to pray for help being safe at Halloween. And Rebecca would like to pray that her little cousin Archie will not be scared at Halloween. And James would like to pray for his dog, Prairie. And we just pray for all these requests, Lord. We pray for you to help us understand the story today. We pray that you put your words in our mouth, put your thoughts in our head, put your song in our heart, and help us to learn what we need to know. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so open up your Bible. To wherever you're going to read today, and okay, and we were going to. I talked to all of you about um, what an interpreter was, which is one of our words up here. The green word is interpreter, and we listened to some Spanish. And no one in here spoke Spanish today. Did anyone speak Spanish today? No. I can speak. What can you say in Spanish? Count. You can count? Okay, let's count in Spanish. Are you ready? Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez. Once, doce, trece, catorce, quince, dieciséis, diecisiete, dieciocho, diecinueve, veinte. That's 20. Yeah. So you can... Some people can understand Spanish. I can only do it up to five. Up to five? Well, I here's some Spanish. Yeah, okay, let's see. Here's some Spanish, so listen carefully. Are you ready? Remember what this said. Let's see if we can hear it. Oh, it's not working. Hello, class. Because it's off. <laughs> Hello, class. Yes, that's what it says. Hello, class. Okay, let's turn it up. Welcome to Sunday school. That's what it says. Okay, let's hear. Hola, clase. Bienvenidos a la escuela dominical hoy. Okay, so she said, this is the English. Hello, class. Welcome to Sunday school today. Hello, right. class. Welcome to Sunday school today. So some people speak both languages, so they would understand both things, and they could be the interpreter. Like Nikita's mom. And Nikita's mom speaks Filipino and English, so she could be an interpreter. So another word in our story is the word sob, which means to cry so much that you're going like this. And sometimes you're trying to be quiet when you're sobbing, but your, your whole body kind of shakes. You're um, really emotional. That's and also very um, emotional. Dramatic. Dramatic, yes. It's very dramatic, yes. Recognize is another word in our Bible. A lot of times people in the Bible don't recognize something and the brothers are not going to recognize Joseph. Recognize means to know someone because you've seen them before. But Joseph is going to look so different in our story. He's going to look so different from his brothers that they're not going to recognize him. They're going to think he's an Egyptian. Because he looks Egyptian, doesn't he? Okay. Yeah. He doesn't look like Joseph when they knew him as a shepherd. And the other thing we're going to talk about today are his brothers. Do you remember that Jacob had four wives? And one four died. Wives. And one died. This, the one that died was Rachel. That was, that's Joseph. Joseph belongs right here. His mommy. And he died, she died, Joseph, Rachel died when she had Benjamin. Benjamin's the little brother. He's the youngest one. He's probably 10 years younger than Joseph. So he was the last brother. But he had all these sons. Leah, his wife, had Reuben and Simeon and Levi and Judah. And then Billah had Dan and Naphtali, and then Zilpha had Gad and Asher, and then Leah had Issachar and Zebulun. 
And then Rachel had Joseph and Benjamin. The Twelve sons all together. Twelve and they sons. all had one daughter. Yeah, well, the, we only know of one daughter that they talk about in the Bible. They probably had other daughters. They just didn't tell us what their names were. Um, who was this? Her name was Dinah. Her name was Dinah. And last week we found out that Joseph had been a slave or in prison for 13 years. That's a long time. Nobody even here except for Miss Brandy and Miss Jill, are even 13 years old. So that'd be like your whole life. But he was, became a slave at 17, and he was a slave until he was 30. That's when he started working for Pharaoh. But he was still obeying God this whole time, but he was learning how to be an Egyptian. He was speaking Egyptian, so now he could speak Hebrew, which is what his whole family spoke, and now he could speak Egyptian. Is and there Egyptian? I don't know. Just look up Egyptian to English. We'll have to do that after the um, lesson. Um, with the, the oh, same that thing of like. Spanish. Like. Yeah. So he could speak that, and he could write it down because he was writing things down. He learned how they dressed. Look, they dressed differently. Remember, I told you they shaved their beards off. Sometimes they shaved all their hair off because it was so hot in Egypt. And he learned how to dress like them, but he was still obeying God. And God was also teaching Joseph how to be a servant. Remember, he was a servant to Potiphar, and then in the prison he took care of other people. So he was teaching, God was teaching Joseph how to be a servant, and he was going to be a leader. So he's going to be a servant leader. He's teaching him how to take care of other people, because to be a really good leader, you have to know how to take care of other people. You have to know how to put other people first, and you have to know how to... Um, put their needs before yours, and to figure out what they need. That's kind of like our verse. Remember our verse that we all said? Let's say it together. Love one another deeply as brothers and sisters outdo one another in show honor. So he was teaching Joseph all these things when he was a servant and he was Romans in prison. Romans 12.10. Romans 12.10, that's right. And he was building relationships. Remember how he knew that the baker and the uh, cupbearer were sad? He was learning how to build relationships On with the them. And One of them died, didn't he? But the, but the cupbearer remembered him because he had built a relationship with him. He was a friend with him. He remembered when the dream, when Pharaoh had all those dreams, he remembered that Joseph had told him. He interpreted, he told what the dream meant. And the dreams meant that there were going to be seven years of really good food and crops and seven years of this word. What is this word? Anybody remember? Or there's no food? Fam. Famine. Famine. Very good. There's famine. a fish called famine, I think. Really? Well, and the famine wasn't just in, in Egypt. It was everywhere. You mean so this, salmon. This yeah, right. salmon is the, is the name of the fish, not salmon. <laughs> so, yeah, this part right. of the story, this is this part of the story this week. The brothers, the ten brothers, and Benjamin, and, and Jacob, the father, and the, the wives that are left, they were all hungry up in Cana, which is 500 miles away. Remember the map that we had that said it was 500 miles away? They were all getting hungry. And Joseph had gotten to Egypt when he was 17, 30 years old when he started saving the food. Seven years later, Joseph is 37 years old and the famine hits. And Joseph's brothers and his father and his families are hungry. Hungry, hungry. So Jacob, do you remember Jacob's other name? What's the other name of Jacob? Israel. Israel, because these are the Israelites. The people of Israel are all from Jacob. He was back in Cana, and he was hungry. Listen to this. I call this, this is the hangry speech. He's hungry, and he's hangry. 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 He's hangry. <laughs> Listen to what he said. Jacob said, he found out there was grain in Egypt, and he said to his sons, why do you just keep looking at each other? I heard there's grain in Egypt. Go down there and buy us some, so we will live and not die. Angry and hungry. So I call this angry. I think that's a commercial on TV too. Yeah, and that's so, someone. 
It's a, I think it's a Snickers bar commercial. So, our read together friends, Mr. David and Mr. James. Mr. David, get your finger ready. Daniel, you're going to read it after them. Here's what it says. Get your finger ready. Here's number one. Listen for how many sons are going to go to Egypt. Are you ready? So, so ten, ten uh, of Joseph's, Joseph's brothers, brothers went down, down to, to Egypt to, to buy, buy grain, grain there. So how many brothers went? Did ten. you hear that? Ten. Why only ten? There were twelve brothers. Well, Joseph was already in Egypt. What about the little brother? Who's the little brother? Benjamin. Benjamin. Oh, that's on that's coming up in, in verse 3. That's going to be Rebecca's verse. Did you know Benjamin, I, I made his, his cake green because our friend Benjamin, his favorite color is green. So I made his cake green. So Benjamin's not going to come. Let's figure out why that is. That is Miss Rebecca's verse. Verse number 4. Why did Jacob not send the little brother Benjamin? Let's see if we can get there. Oh, I know. Let's see. He. Let's see. But. But. Jacob. Jacob. Didn't. Didn't. Send. Send. Joseph. Joseph. Brother. Benjamin. With. With. The. Them. Them. He was. Afraid. Afraid. Benjamin. Benjamin. Mike. 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 He, he was afraid that Benjamin might be harmed. Who else had gotten harmed that he thought? What did he think happened to Jacob? I mean, Joseph. Um, they brought him that robe back and it was all ripped up and they had put blood on it. What did he think happened to Joseph? Do you remember? He got um, him. He thought an animal had attacked him. So he was afraid to send Benjamin because Benjamin and Joseph, they were both the sons of his favorite wife, Rachel, who was gone. And he was afraid something was going to happen to him. So he did not send Benjamin. He's playing favorites again. Not a good idea to play favorites because actually Benjamin is probably 27 years old. So he's not little. He's not like James or Daniel or Connor or David, he's not little. So, but he didn't send him. So he put Benjamin at home. And Connor's gonna tell us what happened when they got there to see if, if Joseph's dream comes true. What was his now, dream? Now, Joseph was the governor of the land, the person who sold grain to all its people. So when Joseph, brother arrived, they bowed down to him with their faces to the ground. So, did they bow down like the dream, where all the grain, mm -hmm. all of Joseph's grain stood up and all the brother's grain bowed down? Did they bow down like his dream said? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Just like God said. And Joseph recognized them. But they didn't recognize Joseph. Listen, if Levi was here, that's what he would read. But at first, it says, soon as Joseph saw his brothers, he recognized them, but he pretended to be a stranger. Kind of like today when David came in the room, he pretended he wasn't here. And Connor came in the room, and he said, I'm the first one here. But I said, nope, there's somebody else here, because David was pretending like he wasn't here. So he, he was, was under, the, under the table. So he was pretending to be a stranger, and he said to them, he spoke in a mean way, and he spoke Egyptian. So he's speaking Egyptian to them, and an interpreter is telling his brothers what it means in Hebrew. He says, where do you come from? And the brother said, we come from the land of Cana. We have come to buy food. And if Levi was here, he would say, read this verse. Joseph recognized his brothers, but they didn't recognize him. And Daniel's going to tell us what happened next in verse 9 of Genesis 42. Daniel, can you read us verse 9 of Genesis 42, Daniel? Can you read us verse 9? What does it say there? Okay. 
The interpreter is telling them what he's saying in Hebrew, and the brothers are like, what are they thinking? Dad is not going to let us bring Benjamin here. That's what they're thinking in their mind. <laughs> oh my. Dad is not going to let us bring Benjamin here. Oh my gosh. What is he asking? And so they start talking to each other. Listen to what they say. They're speaking in Hebrew, but Joseph can understand them because he speaks Hebrew too. God is certainly punishing us because of our brother Joseph. Oh, how we were troubled, how we saw how he was troubled, and he begged us to let him live, but we wouldn't listen. And that's why all this trouble has happened to us. And then Reuben, remember Reuben? He was the one that didn't want to send, didn't want to sell Joseph, wanted to help him out. Reuben says, didn't I tell you not to sin against the boy, but you wouldn't listen to me, and now we are being held accountable for killing him. So they think he's dead. They didn't realize that Joseph could understand everything that were, they were saying. That's in verse 23, right there. He was using someone else to explain their words to him in the Egyptian language. He was using an interpreter. Joseph was kind of surprised, but this is where this word comes in. What was this word? Sob. He was also sad because he realized they were really sorry, but he didn't want them to know. And so he was like, he's sobbing. And he had to turn away from them. And then he came back and spoke to them. And he had Simeon taken, and Simeon was going to stay and be in prison in Egypt. And the other nine brothers were going to go back with the grain because their families needed food. So Simeon stayed there, and they went back. And Joseph gave orders, though, because he, was still, he still loved his brothers. He gave orders. All that grain, they probably had big huge, huge bags to put it in. This is, this is a grain bag. Actually, I think this may be a potato bag. But I couldn't tell. And it didn't open whenever we opened it. We didn't open it from the top. It got open from the side. But they would fill huge bags with grain for their animals and for their people to take back. And they probably had some way to close it on top. So I brought this cinch sack. You probably have cinch sacks at home. Do you have cinch sacks at home where you can take them like this and go like this and they close up? Do you have a cinch sack? Oh stack? yeah! I yeah, have a Build-A-Bear one. Okay. So this is, you can tell this is Mr. Blaylock because it's camouflage. So they had all their grain in there but Joseph being in charge he told his servants the money that they used to pay for it put it back in the very top of their bag and then cinch it closed. So they didn't know that this had happened. A cinch sack and a cinch sack. Yeah, a cinch sack and a cinch sack. So they didn't know that they, their money was back in there, and when they stopped to spend the night, they needed some food to feed to their donkeys and things, 
and one person opened theirs, and they're like, oh no, look what I found in my bag. Our money's back in here. They're, they're going to think we stole this stuff. So then they were like really sad. They got to tell their dad that Simeon's in prison. They got to tell their dad that, oh no, we got our money back. They got to tell their dad that this guy wants us to bring Benjamin back. They're like going, oh my gosh, what is going to happen? This is terrible. Because when you go to the store and you pay for your food, do they give you your money back? No, not at all. And so they were really sad. And when they got back, Jacob found out about it. I don't know what to do with Jacob. Anyway, here he is. Jacob found out about it, and he thought everything was against him. He was so sad, and he was not going to let him take Benjamin back. So they had eaten all the food, and a whole year had passed. And the brothers, especially Judah, was saying, Please, let us take Benjamin back. We have to go get some more food, and we won't get any unless we bring Benjamin. And finally... Jacob said, okay, to Judah and to Reuben, and they took Benjamin back with them. And now Benjamin was 28, and Joseph was 38, and it had been 20 years since he had seen his brother. His brother was probably only seven years old when he left, because he was 17. And when he got there, and when Benjamin got there, Jacob recognized them, and he invited them all to a big meal at lunchtime at his house. And he even brought Simeon back out. And they saw he'd been taken care of just fine. And he was just fine. And they all sat down to eat. And Joseph sat them at the table in order from the oldest one to the youngest one. And they kind of looked at each other like, how did you know this? This is kind of creepy. Kind of <laughs> creepy. What is happening here? Oh, my mm. goodness. And he asked him questions about his father and all these things. And he said, still wanted to make sure his brothers were taking care of his brother Benjamin. So he made a plan. He's going to send him back home. And guess what? Again, he's going to have them put the money back in the bag. But this time, his servants took Joseph's own silver cup, just like you made today, and put it in the bag no. of Benjamin. What is the plan? What's the plan that Joseph had? Well, they, he sent all his brothers away with the food and everything. They thought, oh, thank the Lord. We have, we're going back. And they, then they were going down the road. And Joseph sent some officials with him and said, wait, stop. Somebody has stolen my master's silver cup. Uh, they're like, no, none of us would do that. They're looking at each other. Do you take that? No, no, no. It's okay. Let's see what's in your bags. They started with the oldest one and went down to the youngest one. And he said, whoever has the silver cup has to come back to Egypt and be the slave of Mr. Joseph. Oh, yeah. Nobody had it, nobody had it, nobody had it. Down to Benjamin's bag. Benjamin! There it was. Oh my gosh, can you feel the... They were like, no! And Judah especially, he's like, no, this can't be. They tore their clothes. They were so sad. They all went back to Egypt, and they, they came up to Joseph, and, and Judah, Judah was the one who came up to Joseph and said, please, please, let me be your slave instead of this boy. If I can't send this boy back to my father, he will certainly die. He will be so incredibly sad. And then Joseph knew for sure his brothers had changed. They were taking care of Benjamin. They were taking care of his father. They were taking care of things. Their hearts had changed. And he said immediately, and now we're in chapter 45 of Genesis, have everyone leave. So all the Egyptians left, and just him and his brothers were there. And Joseph began speaking in Hebrew to his brothers. And here's what he said. I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? And they, they had their surprise face on. Let me see your surprise face. And they couldn't even talk. They couldn't even answer his question. And he said, come close to me. And he hugged them all. And he said, I am Joseph, the one that you sold to Egypt. But don't be upset. Don't be angry with yourselves because you sold me here. God sent me ahead of you to save many lives. God had a plan. And what they meant for evil was meant for good. And Joseph understood it. And he was telling them this. And he said to them, don't go back to Canaan. Go get Jacob. Go get my dad. Go get all your families 
and bring them back to Egypt because the famine is going to last five more years because it had already been two, five more years. And the Pharaoh heard about it and the Pharaoh sent them off with extra carts and they brought their whole family to live in Egypt for the rest of the time the famine was there. And many years after that, all because God had a plan for Joseph and his family. And Joseph was faithful. He was forgiving. And his brothers had changed, even though they had done something wrong. So even when you do something terrible, you can change and God can forgive you. And that's what happened in this story today. So let's pray before we go. So put your hands together. Think about God. Close your eyes. Dear Lord, we just thank you for this story. We thank you for your true word, the Bible. Help us to be forgiving like Joseph. And help us to ask forgiveness when we do things that are wrong, just like the brothers. Help us to always obey you in everything you've commanded. Help us to love one another deeply as brothers and sisters and to outdo one another in showing honor. And we pray that at just the right time, everyone here and everyone listening will confess with their mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in their hearts that God raised Jesus from the dead so that they can be saved. We just pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. You all were such great listeners. Such great listeners. Next week, it's not going to be October. November. November. And all of our lessons are going to be about somebody's name. Not the person in this class, but somebody has the same name as the person in this class. And it starts with the letter D. Do you know who that could be? Daniel! Well, we already did lessons about Daniel all summer. David. Who's the other? David. David's going to be the That's next person in the Bible we're going to talk about.